Hi, I'm Brian with Whistler, and in this video we're going to take a look at the Z31R Plus radar detector. This is a high-performance radar detector with a built-in GPS, which also allows it to act as a red light and speed camera detector. Uh, this uses a full-text OLED display and has the real voice alerts, both of which are bilingual, so they can be set for English or Spanish. It also has a number of different ways that it filters out false alerts. Uh, including one of our new features, the Advanced False Alert Detection System. Uh, that's going to filter out most of the common causes of false alerts. There's also the TFSR, or Traffic Flow Signal Rejection. This helps to filter out the signals that uh, come from the traffic flow cameras. As well as FDSR, or Field Disturbance Sensor Rejection, which helps to filter out the signals that you get from other vehicles with the blind spot monitors. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this box open and take a look at what's inside. Alright, so we got everything out of the box here, and the first thing we want to take a look at is the owner's manual. Uh, this booklet here has got all the information and instructions that you need for operating the, the radar detector. So go ahead and make sure you give that a look first. Uh, next we've got a USB cable. Uh, this USB cable is what you're going to use when you want to update the uh, red light and speed camera database. Uh, you can use this to connect your radar detector to your computer to do those updates. Uh, then we've also got the 12 volt power cord that's going to plug into your vehicle's 12 volt outlet and then the other end here will plug into your radar detector to provide it with power. Uh, and then lastly we've got the uh, windshield bracket here along with a couple of suction cups and a rubber bumper. Uh, the suction cups are going to hold the bracket to the windshield and then the bumper here goes in to help the bracket hang more level and it also keeps the metal from tapping against the glass while you're driving down the road. Alright, I'll show you how to get all this stuff installed here in a minute, but before we do that, let's go ahead and take a look at the features on the radar detector. Okay, so we've got the power cord plugged in. Uh, if we take a look over here on the side where we plug the power cord in the back, uh, we've also got a USB port here on the front. Uh, this USB port is going to be used when you need to update the red light camera database. Uh, you can plug this into your computer. There's some files you can download from our website to get the most up-to-date information in the radar detector. Now if we look at the other side of the detector, we've got a couple buttons over here as well. Uh, up here in the, the back of the unit, we've got the bracket release button. Uh, when, you, when you put the uh, windshield bracket into the radar detector, it locks into place. And the only way to re uh, remove it from that is by pressing and holding this button down while you pull the bracket out. Uh, but what we really want to look at right now is the power switch. Uh, the volume wheel here, if we turn it until it clicks, that's going to turn the power on for the radar detector. And when we do that, it's going to go through this little power on self test. This just lets us know that the uh, that the, um, the the screen and the speaker are working. And it's going to show us some of the different features of the radar detector, what's turned on and what's turned off. Uh, so we're going to let it go ahead and go through that little uh, test right now. Okay, so once it gets done running through that test, you can see it comes up and uh, we've got a few things showing on the screen here. Over in the corner, we've got our GPS satellite image. Uh, it's searching for a signal. I'm indoors right now, so I'm not really going to be getting a very good signal. Uh, then we've got a little arrow spinning around here. This is going to be your compass heading. Uh, and then your time is flashing here in the middle. Uh, again, since I don't have a signal, none of that information is coming through right now. Uh, over on here on the end, we've got an H showing that we're in the highway mode, or if you're in the city mode, there will be a C showing there. Now once you do uh, establish a, uh, a GPS signal, the, the clock will stop flashing, the arrow will stop spinning, and you'll hear a voice announce uh, system active, and that lets you know that it's ready to go. Now there are a lot of features on this radar detector. I'm not going to go over all of them in detail here in this video. Uh, for more detail on uh, these features, you can, again, check out that uh, video on our YouTube channel on the basics of radar detectors. Alright, so, if we press the menu button, that's going to get us into the option select mode. Now, as we cycle through these options each time we press the menu button, uh, it shows us on the screen what these different options are going to do for us. Alright, so, what I want to get to is the functions for the GPS, which are kind of what set this detector apart from some of the other models. Uh, so if we keep going past all of these others, we're going to see it come up here and it says GPS Y or Yes. Uh, this will turn on or off the GPS function. If we turn that function off, then most of the other functions on this detector uh, will be disabled. Uh, so we're going to leave that on for right now. And if we go ahead and press the menu button one more time, 
Uh, it comes up says GMT minus 5. This is where we're going to set our time zone. Uh, minus 5 is for Eastern Time, uh, 6 is for Central Time, uh, 7 is Mountain, and 8 is Pacific. So you want to set that depending on which time zone you're in. Uh, I'm in Central Time, so I'm going to go ahead and set it on minus 6. Uh, then if I press the menu button one more time, uh, it says DST No. Uh, this is for Daylight Saving Time. Uh, we are in Daylight Saving Time right now as we're filming, so I'm going to go ahead and press the Dark button, and I'm going to change that to say Yes. All right, now uh, the clock, yes or no, whether or not we want the clock to be displayed on the screen. Uh, the compass, uh, same deal. Uh, we can choose whether or not the compass is displayed. All right, speed, miles per hour. Uh, this one, there are, there are a few functions on here that are operated based on your current speed. Uh, and this is going to determine whether those values are set in miles per hour, kilometers, uh, per, kilometers hour. per hour, or if the speed monitoring on your detector is turned off altogether. Uh, so uh, for the United States, we're going to set this for miles per hour. Our next option here says O speed zero. Uh, this is our over speed warning. So if we set this to a certain value, whenever we exceed that speed, the radar detector is going to come up and give us an alarm, letting us know that we're going faster than we said we wanted to go. Again, it's in miles per hour. Uh, so you just use your dark button to change the value up or your quiet button to change the value down. Uh, if you have it set to zero, that setting is disabled. Okay, the next option here, um, it's going to be uh, our auto quiet speed, AQSPD. Uh, whenever we go below the value that we set here, uh, it's going to automatically engage the auto quiet mode. Uh, again, this one, if you set it to zero, it disables that feature. Uh, press the menu button. The next one that we get to uh, is going to be our auto speed filter, uh, or excuse me, the auto filter speed. Uh, what this is going to do is whenever you go uh, below this whatever speed you set here, it's going to engage the highest level filtering available. Okay, and the next option under the menu is the uh, alert radius. This is the uh, distance at which it's going to give you an alert when you start approaching uh, one of the red light or speed cameras. Uh, again, a uh, dark button to adjust this radius up or down. Uh, and then the next option here says DRAD. This is for delete radius. So if you program in some custom waypoints, uh, you can delete them here. Uh, and uh, through this, it will delete any of those waypoints that are within uh, whatever radius is displayed on the screen. Uh, the next option says all delete. Uh, this is going to delete all custom waypoints. Uh, the next one comes up with some numbers here. These are the satellite numbers for the GPS satellites that it's receiving signals from. And then if we press the menu button one more time, we go back to tone 3, which was the first option, so we've been through all the different settings. Okay, so uh, those are all the settings in the detector, so now let's go ahead and get this installed in the vehicle. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do to install the radar detector is set up the windshield bracket. Uh, we can see here on the metal part, we've got these two slotted holes at the top that are going to hold the suction cups. And then right where the metal starts to bend, we've got another hole that's going to hold the bumper. Alright, so if we take the suction cups and we look at them, there's a little narrow part on the neck right there. If we put the suction cup into one of these slotted holes, and then we're going to slide it out to the end. And it'll kind of snap into place there. Then we're going to do the same thing on the other side slide it over, get it into place, and then we're going to take the rubber bumper and we're going to put the narrow end of it into that hole where the metal bends. So we put it in there and we just push it into place. If you have trouble getting that to go in, uh, what you can do is wet the end of it just a little bit and that'll help it slide in there just a little bit easier. Alright, so now that we've got the windshield bracket set up, let's get out to the car and get this going. Now that we're in the vehicle, the first thing we want to do is clean the windshield. We want to make sure that the glass and the suction cups are both clean and dry. Then we're going to take our suction cups and press them against the glass to make them stick. And then we're going to take our radar detector and press it onto the windshield bracket. Now, as we can see here, the, the radar detector is not hanging level. So what we need to do is remove the radar detector from the bracket and then bend the bracket a little way so that the radar detector will hang level when we put it back on there. Next, we're going to take the small end of the power cord and we are going to plug it into the power port on the back side of the radar detector. 
And finally, we're going to take the large end of the power cord here and plug it into the 12 volt outlet in the vehicle. All right, so now that we've got our radar detector plugged in, all we've got to do is turn it on and we'll be ready to go. For more information on our products, check out